Hey everyone. So in the quest for continual learning, uh, I think I've spoken to a few of you about the training that I'm doing at the moment with um, a dear friend and colleague of mine, and it's all to do with building trauma-informed workplaces. Now this is uh, within the context of yoga studios, that seems to be where a lot of this trauma-informed work uh, is sort of focused at the moment, but I'm sitting through this training, picking up little nuggets of what we can apply in our corporate lives as well. So um, with this bigger picture view around how do we create spaces that are aware, inclusive, um, start to build safety, particularly in change programs, right, where we seem to be questioning ourselves and, and maybe questioning our sense of security, whether that be in our job, um, our competency, you know, we, we're sort of hitting a, a bunch of activators. And so I've been doing this training as part of building a more uh, inclusive and aware space. And I had this really cool realization this week that I, I wanted to share with you. We had a really awesome session with uh, one of our coaches and mentors, Ale, who spoke about building trans-aware and trans-affirming spaces in the context of yoga studios. And really great, great session. But one thing that stood out to me, uh, we got some time to have some Q&A. And Ale drew my attention to something which had been bubbling along in my subconscious. So we talked a lot about binary worldview. Now, in business, I think I've talked to many of you before around this idea of how do we move from black and white into building spectrums of options, building a whole range of possibilities, and moving into that space of we're actually we're not in a situation where there's a right and wrong answer anymore. We're actually in a situation where the choice that we make simply opens up another series of choices. And wherever we may be on that journey or on that path, choosing A or B simply opens up a different set of choices. There's no right or wrong. Uh, there is simply a set of choices that come with that first decision and a series of opportunities or challenges that open up as a result of taking that decision. So this concept of moving towards a non-binary worldview, you know, to, to moving towards, you might talk about uh, seeing the grey in situations, being able to operate in the grey zone, uh, you know, bringing the, the spectrum of technicolour to our decision making. All of these themes of diversity has been wrapped up in, um, in a lot of the conversations I have about business for a long, long time. And Ale drew my attention to something, as I said, that had been sort of sitting under the subconscious. And I wanted to bring it forward because I thought it could be beneficial for uh, others of you to start to look at how this binary, uh, black and white kind of field of view starts to permeate a little deeper than maybe what some of us are used to, what some of us are expecting. Uh, and in that, in an attempt to bring that to the surface, maybe discover something a little deeper about ourselves and maybe do a little bit more of that work around understanding where some of that bias may be coming from and understanding our own motivators, understanding the way that we make decisions, just learning a little bit more about ourselves. And so what Ali had brought forth was this really great example where he said, uh, very subtle, very innocuous, very innocent example of binary worldview. And he said, you know, you'll, have, you'll hear people say, well, I'm a good person. And implicit in that is this idea between a good person or a bad person. Now, no one person is good or bad. We all have shades of grey in, in all of that. We are good in our intentions and some of our actions. We have, um, we have bad behaviours that show up consciously or otherwise. Uh, but this idea of, you know, somebody saying, I'm a good person and putting that pressure on themselves to be a good person uh, and, and the pressure that comes with the one or the other, as opposed to holding space for, I have good qualities and I, and I operate <laughs> in a way that I think is kind and is connecting and all of those wonderful things. And at the same time, I have these shadows that I'm working on. I have these things that are not so great about myself. Uh, but this idea of just that simple, simple sentence, I'm a good person, and the inherent binary, the inherent black and whiteness in that. And it struck me because I thought, here's an example of something that's very subtle, very innocent, a throwaway comment that we may make without even thinking about it. But when you start to scratch the surface and you realize, well, hang on a minute, there's a whole bunch of implicit 
uh, biases and implicit assumptions. There's, there's a whole bunch of stuff sitting behind that. And this was one of those examples for me where it made me pause and reflect and actually take a moment to think how this permeates, how this black and white worldview permeates so many layers of our being and how it's sitting there just beneath the surface waiting to pop out when we least expect it. And it made me wonder, made me think a lot about those times when I'm sitting in a situation coaching a client um, or, or having a conversation about which decision to make. How legitimately uh, committed am I to there is no right and wrong, there are simply choices that open up new challenges or new opportunities as a result of those choices that we make? How committed to that am I? When I'm still carrying some of these uh, little innocuous phrases like, I'm a good person, that are encouraging or uh, reinforcing that black and white worldview that we're trying to move away from. So in the spirit of digging a little bit deeper, in the spirit of finding some of these the ways that these things crop up in unexpected places, I thought I'd share that little story with you this week and challenge you to go away and have a bit of a think about how some of those implicit behaviors, some of those sort of subconscious behaviors, some of those biases might be showing up, even when you've got a very deliberate plan to change your behavior, you have a very deliberate plan to try and keep thinking about all of those possibilities and those options, and, and really committed to that idea of there is no right and wrong, there are simply options and possibilities. How do we keep that expansive mindset? Even when we're committed in that way, there may be other things that are sitting on the, on the, on the shoulder sort of holding us back. So that's my challenge to you this week, is to go and do a bit of reflection around that. Have a look at some of those things that you may be carrying, some of those innocuous little phrases. Uh, maybe observe yourself over the week and see if you have one or two of them come up. Jot it down, make some notes. Reflect on how some of those more implicit uh, values and beliefs maybe show up in a way that you're not expected. Let's dig deeper into try and unraveling that not necessarily to brutally change it straight off the bat, but simply to be aware of it so that we can have that awareness that we are carrying some of this stuff whilst we are still working on uh, improving ourselves in our decision making. So that's it from me this week. A uh, little bit philosophical, but I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, as always, I hope wherever you are in the world, you're having an awesome, awesome week and I will see you again soon.